Hello everyone, happy Masonry Monday and welcome to the newest episode of Mario's History Talks. So you've undoubtedly seen this article floating around social media. It claims, among other things, that Homer may have spoken a language similar to today's Macedonian. So we'll take a look at this article, verify or debunk some of its claims, as well as reveal some surprising facts about Homer that you didn't know about. But first, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to stay up to date with all the great new videos coming out. So you've probably heard of Homer. No, not that one, this one. The guy you pretended to read in high school and college. So let's take a look at him. First of all, we don't really know if Homer was even a real person. Modern day scholars suggest that the two poems most ascribed to Homer, the Iliad and the Odyssey, were not composed by the same author. And this is based on a number of differences between the two, including differences in ethics, theology, vocabulary, grammar, and even geography. But what we do know is that the poems were first composed in the 800s to 700s BCE. They were composed, taught, and survived entirely orally. Yes, back then, singers could memorize over 16,000 lines of each poem. So you really have no excuse as to why you can't memorize my 10-minute history talks. And these poems were finally written down in a number of versions in Athens and finally in one unified version in 510 BCE. So based on this, we really don't know what language Homer, if he was even a real person, would have spoken. Now, what you have to understand about the Greek found in the Iliad and the Odyssey is that no person would have ever spoken like this, ever. It is a completely invented literary language that fuses a number of Greek dialects, including some words that were modified just so the meter of the poem could fit. And as for our Greek friends that pride themselves in their ability to read ancient Greek, I would venture a guess that not having any prior knowledge of ancient Greek, particularly Homeric Greek, the average Greek speaker would be very hard pressed to not only read, but make basic sense of Homer's lines. But hey, they can sure read those coins. Now, I am going to say this loud and clear because I know I'll be butchered by it in the comments. I am not suggesting that there were any ancient Slavic speakers during Homer's time. I will never say that Homer, or even Alexander for that matter, were Slavic speakers. This is a trap our Greek internet friends try to corner us into so we sound absurd when we tell the world that somehow there were ancient Slavs during Alexander's time. Not only did the term Slav not even exist back then, but we simply do not know nearly enough about the languages spoken by the Macedonians, Illyrians, Thracians, Paeonians, Brigians, Mysians, you name it, to make any educated guess about this. We know definitively that the Slavic languages as we know them in the Balkans first came about in the early Middle Ages, and they were not codified until much later in the 9th century by the brother saints Cyril and Methodius based on the dialects spoken in Salonika. However, this does not mean that the Paleo-Balkan languages spoken by all the tribes I mentioned were not in some way related to the languages north of the Danube. We know Thracian, for example, has a lot of words that we can comfortably ascribe to the Balto-Slavic language family the language family extending from Macedonia, north to Lithuania and Latvia, and all the way east to Russia. Now, as for Homer, did he also use some uh, words that modern-day Slavic speakers would be able to readily recognize? Let's take a look. I'll try to verify some of the words that I found in the article, as well as present some words that I found through my study of Homer. I'll be using the fantastic online resource of R.J. Cunliffe, to find all the words, and you can find a link to it in the description below. So let's get started. Kotule, Steno, Odites, Estio, Pa, Dolikos, Oinos, Dawer, Swekuros, 
sua curei, ata, maia, teino, domonde, amalos, sun, ode, lego, eise, eruko, areon, pezos, steino, tribo, badein, lepo, ivi, praseis, bule. The last one you just heard is actually from the very first lines of Homer, where Homer says, Dios de Teleto Bule, which means in the will of Zeus was moving towards its end. But the modern day Greeks do have this word as vuli. It means council, assembly, government, it can also mean will. However, I would argue it is more preserved in the modern day Macedonian language. Case in point, the Lord's Prayer. It says, Thy will be done. In Macedonian and in Russian, Serbian, it says, Voya. In modern day Greek, it says, Thelima, coming from the word thelo, which means to want or to desire. So while we both do have this word, I would say meaning will, its primary usage still more found, more prevalent in the Macedonian language. So as we mentioned, Homer used a variety of words to make the meter fit. So how do these words, these Slavic words, used all the way up in Russia, make their way into Homer's work? Well, one of history's mysterious and silent people may hold the key. Before the arrival of the Greeks, we know the Balkan Peninsula was largely inhabited by a group of people called the Pelasgians. Sadly, we don't know too much about them. In fact, the term Pelasgian may have just been an umbrella term for all the indigenous Balkan natives. But what we do know, based on the toponyms of the area, those in an ethos, a telltale sign of Pelasgian settlement, as well as a lot of historical sources, is that their presence was very widespread and large in the Balkans and even Asia Minor. There's a reason Homer's Iliad does mention the Pelasgians as a tribe fighting in the Trojan War. Now as for their origins, the ancient Greek historian Herodotus tells us that they were in fact barbarian. This means that their language was unintelligible or alien to the Greeks. They couldn't understand them. So we can rule out the possibility that they were originally Greeks, as some Greeks like to claim. So could these Pelasgians, these widespread Aborigines of the Balkans hold the key? Could they have in fact transmitted some of their vocabulary to Homer in the composition of his poems? And could these people be the distant ancestors of the same group of people that are today called the South Slavs? Well, I'm not the first person to have this theory. It's been around for quite some time. And a lot of researchers in the 1800s considered the Pelasgians the ancestors to today's South Slavs. However, at the end of the day, it's still hard to say conclusively whether this is the truth. However, I will say there probably is a reason Macedonian villagers still practice the Homeric era tradition of placing coins on one's grave so the dead can have the fare needed to make the journey into the underworld. There probably is a reason the Macedonian villagers in Aegean Macedonia still tell myths of the three sisters of fate, also going back to ancient times. And there probably is a reason that Professor John Miles Foley of the University of Missouri searched through South Slavic oral traditions as proof of a continuation of the oral tradition of Homer's day. But I'll let you decide. Just remember, you have to do your own digging. You can't just take what you read online at face value. Spitting back out what you read online, well, that makes us no better than the Greek and Bulgarian internet warriors. And that's a lifestyle nobody wants to see. So thank you again, as always, folks, for tuning in to Mario's History Talks. And I'll leave you today with a segment from the Macedonian Content Farmers podcast, in which a good friend and fellow patriot, Jason Miko, gave a shout out to Mario's History Talks. So if you're interested in current events, politics, and what's happening in Macedonia and the world, definitely check out his show and subscribe as well. 
Have a listen. Well, let's go to our, as we're calling them, our farmers' picks of the week. And um, I want to give a shout out to uh, of a friend of mine, Mario uh, Christovsky. He is a an American, but born in Bitula, uh, lives and works in Ohio, and he has created on YouTube uh, what he calls Mario's History Talks. And I think he's up to eight episodes now. And he just, you know, they're very short, seven, eight, ten minutes long, uh, fun little videos and where he talks about Macedonian history. Um, he's not afraid to take on our, uh, especially our Greek and Bulgarian friends, but they're very educational. They're fun. They're funny. Uh, and so I just want to give a shout out to, to Mario Ristovsky and Mario's History Talks, History Talks on YouTube. You can just plug Mar just plug in Mario's History Talks in a YouTube search bar and you'll find them and enjoy them.